Okay, so the question I got is, if you trust the sage, there is nothing else to desire and fear. And an, another part of that was, is there anything to fear or identify with? Well, that question is complicated because it depends on what level of consciousness the student's at. So, um, so for example, if a student um, takes on the... Um, what's called one-pointedness of mind, total ferocity, to let go of absolutely everything and uh, be directed completely to what the sage says, to reside in the infinite, to reside in that which is beyond all form and all that passes, and it sort of doggedly sticks to that. Um, well, you know, as at, what will happen is every fear and desire will come up and every belief will come up. And... Uh, uh, so if you if you if you trust the sage well trust the sage you have to you have to like as these things come up to trust the sage is to go to the observer of anything that comes up until this stuff doesn't come up any longer and to let everything else go now that, that would be the one point in this of mind so what what is um yeah so when at full transcendence or enlightenment of course uh, once the ego is 100 percent burnt off and all temptations and all dualities and all beliefs have been transcended and passed. At that point, you know, that usually the death of the ego comes up. And as the death of the ego, uh, as Ramana uh, uh, described, you know, the, the experiencing of the dying of the ego, the final dying of the ego is finally burnt off. At that point, of course, mm, there is nothing to fear or desire. It doesn't exist there and can never exist in that place. But if, if, um, if you're not in that place, then it's like the one point of my, pointedness of mind to get there. But um, about those points, I would say the desires and fears come to test you until you've resolved them all uh, uh, and gone through the last test, uh, the death of the ego. Um, so is there anything to identify with and fear? Well, in, in enlightenment, what is enlightenment? Enlightenment, I would say, is um, as the, the, the death of the ego has occurred, i.e. The, the, the core roots of the ego has burnt off, so it can't regenerate, um, then one is in the what I'd call the enlightened state. It's stable. It's not like, you say, like, it's bliss today, and then the next day it's like I'm in the body or whatever it is. Um, so, the, so there's still some dualistic shifting, and there's still some things that one is, uh, that one potentially needs to clear. So um, there's nothing to identify with. So is there anything to identify with? Well, there isn't anything to, you know, while things haven't been cleared, transcended from the conscious, from the separated consciousness, then there are, there still result, there still uh, resides within the limited consciousness, the capacity to tempt one with those beliefs, thoughts, and fears from within or from the collective ego. So, um, and I would say that they probably would come up at some point for you to clear them and transcend them. Um, so um, I'm answering the thing, because of course, from the sage's point of view, from that, from, from the infinite, from the infinite nothingness and stillness, um, speaking from that place, shall we say, of course, uh, to the student, there isn't nothing there to fear with or identify because there is fear and things and duality that can't exist in that place. It's too solid for anything to enter of temptation or fear or, or duality. But uh, for the student to hear that, I mean, that's very, I mean, that's the, the um, um, I'll, I'll, when I used to meet uh, one of my teachers of enlightenment, it wasn't the, it wasn't always the words the words were very helpful but because he was in those states of profound bliss it was very easy to let go of the identification of thoughts and be in the in resonance with that state of of, of bliss out of thoughts so um so that was the the grace of that there was a lot of graces in being in the presence of, of a teacher um in now if you're in in duality um, the Course of Miracles says there is nothing to fear. I mean, the Course of Miracles is saying there there is nothing. Uh, there is, I mean, 
nothing has nothing to fear. If you're nothing, then not, you know, there is no thing that nothing fears. If you're identifying with the body and the belief systems of the ego, of course, fear can seem to exist because, you know, maybe something will threaten my body or maybe something will threaten my belief systems. So it seems, uh, so what you're doing there is stating in absolute truth, there is nothing to fear. But if you identify with the physical body and the belief systems, then um, there seems within the world of the illusions uh, for fear and uh, limiting um, experiences to exist. Um, so um, if you're reading uh, Teachers of Enlightenment and and uh, in putting in yourself, yeah, it's a very good thing. You're just washing out all those limiting beliefs, like I'm afraid I won't be able to pay the rent uh, or whatever it is, or that I'm afraid the body will drop dead or something like that. Um, so it's good just to wash them out by listening to teachers or reading teachers saying there is nothing to fear in truth. In truth, there is nothing to fear. Uh, in illusions, there seems to be something to fear or identify with. Um, yeah, so I'll stop there.